All right, I want to welcome everybody. Today we are having a super special class. Uh, today, our very own Melanie Shavelsky, our advisory board member for Fiber Arts, is going to teach us how to make wristers, which are a fingerless glove. And they have been requested by our partner, Knit the Rainbow. And I'm just going to let Melanie take it away. There we go. Well, welcome. So what you will need today, really quick, you uh, a skein or just some worsted yarn, a size H five millimeter hook, scissors, and a blunted or a darning needle. So the way I'm gonna do the pattern today, I'm gonna start you off with the basic, a couple of rows, and then it gets really boring. So I don't want you to have to watch me 25 minutes of going back and forth my rows. I'm gonna have a piece and then I'm gonna finish, uh, I'm gonna show how to finish it off and a couple of options how to finish it off. We're also gonna talk about the yarns you should be using for this project. This is a pattern I wrote, it's free. Feel free to uh, distribute it, share it with anybody who might like it. It's beginner friendly because we're gonna crochet pretty much a rectangle shape. So we're not gonna crochet in the round. There are some, uh, but I have some other uh, wrister patterns. If you're interested, you can message me. So we're going to start off. We're going to chain 21. Let's do our slip knot. Okay. Chain 21. One, two, three. Whoops. Of course, on camera, I can never chain four, five. Move your thumb up. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And the reason I move my thumb up, your chain stays nice and straight. It doesn't get us twisted around. So that's 15, 16, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Chain. So this is your. Now, this is based on my hand. Uh, we'll talk about this later too, because this is pattern is great because you can make it yours. So this is based my length, I prefer. Okay, so this is your beginning. So row one, we are going half double crochet across. So, okay, we're gonna start in our second chain, which is, okay, second chain off the hook right there. Okay, half double crochet, yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through. So, yarn over, insert in a stitch, yarn over, three loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through. And one more time. Okay. Yarn, whoop, yarn over. Insert your hook in. I should have mentioned this when you in your foundation chain, make sure you get two loops on your hook right there through both loops. Grab that yarn, three loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through. I think everybody's pretty comfortable with the half double crochet. So once again, if you have your chain, you wanna kind of want this braided look, kind of that cable look facing you. Yarn over, insert, make sure you grab right under both loops here. There we go. Pull up the yarn, three loops, yarn over, pull through all three loops. And that's what we're gonna do for the rest of this row. And don't worry if it's, it's gonna start curling up a little bit. That is perfectly normal. Don't worry about it. Just keep working. 
I am using uh, actually Michael's Loops and Thread Impeccable right now. Okay, so we're at the end. Chain one, flip over, and do the same thing. Half double crochet, half. Oh, let me do this. I showed this actually. Let me do this really quick because some. Uh, I think Kim last week had a question after your turning chain. So you chain one. Uh, you can also chain two with a half double crochet. I only chain one. I am for me. I, I just like to look better. Right. So after your chaining, where do you put your stitch? For single crochet and half double crochet, it will always go in this uh, chain right in this stitch right here, unless the designer and the pattern says otherwise. Have a, a double crochet and a taller stitch will go in the second chain, unless the pattern and the designer says otherwise. So half double crochet, single crochet in the first stitch, double crochet and taller in the second one. Okay, just gonna go half double crochet across. So the rectangle I made for my wrist uh, was about, uh, I think six and a half by seven and a half inches. Really the chain count is not that important in this pattern, which is kind of nice. So if you need to chain 30 for your wrist or you want it even longer or you want it shorter, but my measurements were about six and a half by seven and a half inches. Always do your chain one at the end and turn. And we're going back and forth. And I'm using a light yarn just to show uh, for this project. Uh, uh, we asked not to use a, a light yarn. Melanie? Yes. Do you mean light in weight or light in, in color. color? I'm sorry, in color. So you're going to do this back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until do one of these. <laughs> until you have something like this. So this is just what we did. It's just back and forth, back and forth rows of half double crochet. Now, if you wanna do it for yourself, fold it around your wrist like this. You wanna start it a little bit tight because these stretch out a little bit. So if it fits like this, that is the perfect size for your hand. Uh, feel free to use your family members to measure theirs. And then you can just write down uh, you know, just measure it across width and length and just measure it and write it down. This way you have a nice, um, uh, kind of like a little chart. Oh, a men's might be this, a kid's might be this, but you know, we'll have hands for every size you make. So it's wonderful. But this is where you end up with. The harder part with this pattern is the finishing. It's not really the start of it. So usually now at the end, you would be finishing off, right? So do not finish off. Chain one. Don't turn, do not turn. Cause now instead of turning going back, we're gonna go this way right here. Now there are really no uh, even perfect stitches on the sides. So just kind of use your judgment. You want to go evenly across. You don't want it to start pulling it together. You just want to stay kind of evenly. So my trick sometimes is I just look at the width of my hook and I try to put this, my stitch right next to it. So it's kind of look. So you want to kind of space your stitches, the size, like the tip of your hook. 
So chain one. So I'm gonna put my first one right here and just single crochet. So what I do is, I don't know if you can see there, you have these this bigger holes on the side and then you have these two smaller ones like next to it. So this is where I kind of place my stitches to keep it even. And then you just lightly don't pull too tight. Single crochet across. Okay, show this again. So I have that bigger loop and then I have these two smaller ones. So let's see, you can see this. So I have this bigger one right here. And then I have these smaller ones next to it. Like I said, the most important part here, you don't want any puckering. You don't want to start having the rectangle kind of get smaller and pull together. So, yeah. And the nice thing, if you use the same color yarn, it kind of blends all in. So nice and easy. Don't pull too hard. Okay, and then at the end, you kind of got have this funky little loop here and I just go right there in the middle and just pull it all up. So now we have a nice little foundation chain on top of our side. This is gonna be the top. Okay, chain one and turn. Now we're going back and forth again. And I'm actually only adding one more row of single crochet on top of it. You can add more depending on the length where you want the, the glove to end. Uh, you could also at this point change color and then put a little accent row on top. So I'm just gonna do it in one color just to show the basic pattern. Single crochet. Uh, I do want to end with a single crochet or uh, and you can also do like a um, like a little shell stitch. Um, but I do like a single crochet finish because it just seems a little bit tighter fit for me. Okay. There we go. You have your two rows on top. Now you're going to take your, okay, let me flip it this way. It's easier to show. And we're going to take it and we're going to fold it like this. Okay, just lay that and we're going to fold it in half. Now take a second, remove your hook and kind of line it up. Make sure, especially the edges are lined up. You can, if you want at this point, um, you can put one of those little sewing clips here. You can put a little chain. Let me see where my, okay. Also put a little stitch marker in right there. Uh, you can clip it kind of like you do with fabric or you can eyeball it like I do most of my projects. So. I recommend just kind of clipping it a little bit. Okay, now we're gonna take these two sides and we're gonna cro crochet them together like we did the hat. Chain one. And then we're gonna go right this first stitch. Make sure you go through both sides. Single crochet. For my hand, I did six single crochets. So we have one, make sure we pull through both sides, two, three, four, five. Let me try five, but not let me go six. But this is best if you just put your hand in it. Let me take this thing out and kind of see where it falls on your hand. 
Do you like it if this is too long on your hand? Take a stitch out or a couple or add more if this part of your hand is longer. And then you can kind of see, okay, I don't like my thumb, some wiggle room. Okay, so this is gonna be the part roughly where I'm gonna join my thumb again. So actually I'm gonna take a stitch out. This is a little long for me. I kind of like to have it fall here. So I need to remember four with this yarn, but I'm gonna go what the pattern says. So the pattern was single crochet six. Okay, now we're gonna do the thumb opening. So for that, what I do is for this glove, I'm gonna pick this side to slip stitch. And then for the pair for the other glove, I'm gonna put this side to slip stitch. And then you have a nice edge on your right, and then you're gonna have a nice edge on your left hand. So I'm gonna slip stitch six stitches on this side only. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right there. Do that again. So on just one side and slip stitch is just insert your hook grab your yarn and then pull your yarn through the loop. That's all the slip stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, lay it back down, even it back out. Okay, make sure your ends still are lined up. Okay, and then Next stitch, we're going to put right here to get it lined up again for both sides. And we're just going to single crochet both sides together again. No. And I have no clue on my yarn. <laughs> it's short because I, I crocheted it and frogged it. So Ignore my boo boo. I'm just going to tie some yarn on. I'm okay. just going to tie my yarn really quick. But it's also in an emergency here. This is what you can do you can take your two strands of yarn, knot, make a knot, come on. Like, really, like, pull it, like. Pull it and trim it. There we go. In an emergency, but plan better than I did. So, okay, back. And now we're just gonna go down. Get to that last stitch. What I like to do is I like to take this little itty bitty piece right there. And I just like to like tuck it in here just to kind of hide it. Okay. And then do that last stitch. And pull through. And then just try it on. And there's your wrister. And there's really no left or right. So even if you don't, you don't even have to switch the slip stitch sides. It's really for aesthetics. I just like it, the top side to be more decorative, but there is no left and right. So you just make two of these. And so it looks like this on the side. And all you have to do then is just weave in your ends. So we're making a rectangle joint with a hole. <laughs> how, how do we know how long to make them? If, we, if they fit us, they'll fit somebody or? Yes. <laughs> I think absolutely, absolutely. It, absolutely. Like, it needs to be longer or is it, I don't know. 
Okay, so mine, so here's my knuckle, right? So mine goes down here. So this is what I like. I don't want it longer. I mean, this is my, I mean, gloves, when you buy gloves, they just kind of hit right below your knuckle. I mean, you can make it longer, just uh, chain a little bit more. Sure. Yeah. That, I mean, that's the good thing about this project. If you want it longer, add five, six chains. If you need it wider, uh, crochet it more than my seven and a half inches. That's why, you know, kind of double check. It's like, okay, I can fold it now comfortably around my fingers. Now I can sew it uh, or stitch it up. But, you know, it's the same with the hats. It's, there's gonna be a hand that fits it. And, you know, that's why I'm volunteering all my family members to get their measurements. And I'm gonna crochet them in just a couple of different uh, sizes. I'm, I'm sure there's no right or wrong, but I, I, yeah. I remember when we asked, how come fingerless, how come no fingers? And you, you said, well, they, if they get cold, they pull their hands back into the wrister. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know if there was enough room to do that and still cover oh. up your. There you go. Fingers gone. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah. I can pull it up and it's just hitting my knuckles. So, okay. And you know, you want to start these a little bit tighter. These are going to stretch a little bit. Like this That's one already cool I've worn so many times. I mean, I can pull it all the way down here. Cool project, Melanie. Thank you. Yeah. Now there, you can jazz this up. Like I said, you can um, make these two, uh, uh, you can uh, use a contrasting color for your single crochet on top. You know, you can do your little ruffle edge on top. You could even add it to the bottom if you want to. You can do a little ruffle edge. It's just a little shell stitch. And I just did like five half double crochets. And I think I skipped two, I have to read up what I did. <laughs> <laughs> so you can do a little shell on top. Um, let me see, what else did I make? Okay, sorry, these are not all finished with the colors, but like this one, I just put uh, a dark navy and finish it with a dark navy on the side. And I just did the last single crochet in a kind of like a contrast color. If you're very adventurous, you can add a little thumb to it. So I just kind of hooked my, started the joint, my yarn here, and I just went around in circle a couple of times. So you can add a little thumb to it if you want. It's not the prettiest looking when you have it like this, but it's functional. I, like I said, I love a worsted yarn, but my preference is a sock or DK yarn. It still keeps you super warm. Um, I just love the texture like a sock yarn will give because you just, so this is the same one. It's just done uh, in a sock yarn, but I just love the ripples it makes. And then the little stitches are so cute on the thumb. I love it. So I, I wouldn't go up in the yarn. I, you probably could go to a bulky, but you're gonna leave, you're gonna lose some of the texture and mobility. So I would recommend worsted yarn and down. I made one with a little bulkier and it doesn't have as much give, but it's still pretty. So this is just the little bit a bulkier look. Now this is a color you do not want to use for Knit the Rainbow. This is just for me, for my family. Uh, we recommend please to use dark gender neutral colors. I do like these tweed because it has just a couple of speckle of colors that can be worn by anyone. So we like the, the blues, the dark browns, even a dark purple, dark grays. So I use, these are the ones I use and really, really, really love for this project. So we have wool ease. Yes, we can use something with a little wool and it make, makes it toasty, cozy, love it. Um, please always check the label, whatever you choose. 
that your wool blend is washable and dryable. So we have wool ease from Lion Brand. Love it. I love this yarn. Love these two. So super nice. I made, I think I made most of the wristlets I made for Knit the Rainbow in a, I love this yarn. Like this one is, I love this yarn. Kind of like a variation in colors. Love Heartland too. I made one in this, very nice as well. Sock yarn. It's a super wash. So make sure it's a super wash wool. Use some mandala for it. It's a, it's a um, size three weight yarn. So it's a little bit thinner than the worsted. And that's just what I like, but they have some really nice colors as well. And then of course, here's a label. <laughs> <laughs> Big twist value worsted on sale now for $1.74. These are our yarn recommendations for testings and more, but this project really doesn't have, ha, doesn't have a lot of restrictions. So you can actually just kind of go for it as long as we keep it gender neutral and the colors gender neutral, please. Another option is you can play with your stitch. So this is, let me see the difference. So this one is a regular half double crochet and I did this little swatch in a half double herringbone almost has like this little nice little knitted look to it so you can play with your stitches but keep them keep the um, stitches somewhat close together you don't want big holes um, it's going to New York City it's freezing cold so warmth is a big factor on these. Uh, what I do is for my herringbone, half double crochet, I always do a regular half double crochet in the first one. Okay, so herringbone, half double crochet. Yarn over, insert in your stitch, pull up a loop, three loops on the hook, just like the half double crochet. Now, we're gonna take this first, First loop right there, right there, and we're going to slip stitch it through, okay. We're gonna slip stitch it through the second loop. Two loops on a hook, yarn over and pull through both. Okay, so yarn over, insert your hook, grab that yarn through loops on the hook, and now take that first little loop, and slip stitch it through the second. That leaves you two loops, yarn over, pull through both loops. Yarn over, insert in your stitch, grab that yarn, pull it up, three loops on the hook. Take your first loop and then slip stitch it through your second one. Two loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through. Yarn over. And it gets easier after it's 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 a weird movement at first, because I want to just do a half double crochet, but uh, after a while you kind of kind of comes easier. I just have to stop and think once in a while because I just want to kind of yarn over and pull through all three loops. But yeah, I love it. It just has such a lovely texture. So you can play with your stitches too. Let me finish this row. I can't leave the row unfinished. <laughs> Oh, and the last stitch of the row, I do half double crochet. Uh, it seems to me giving a straighter, neater edge. So let me see, will it? But that's how it looks. And I show you the comparison. This is just a regular half double crochet. This is the herringbone. It's, I love this stitch. It's so pretty. I saw it. It, it just came out on a new pattern for a, a baby blanket, but I thought this was just looking so nice. And then, you know, it's gonna be like this on your glove. Yeah, definitely my new favorite stitch. And that is really all I have for you today. It's, it's, it's a quick little project. I mean, you can uh, whip these out pretty fast, especially if you stay in one color, but you know, we encourage you with this, you know, 
add a little color to it, add a little ruffle to some of them. So make them in different sizes. And all you need to measure is for your size, kind of see where you want it, the glove to start and to end. And then add like two to three stitches, just in case you crochet a little bit tighter. And then your width, just where you can pinch both sides together. You want it kind of close at first because like I said, they will stretch out, but that's it. That's awesome. Thanks, Melanie. I yes. they're fabulous. And I think it, they're super easy. Uh, it's a basic, I mean, we can, we can make them really complicated, but they're really a simple, simple uh, project. And they're really, really wanted was the thing that um, our partner at Knit Rainbow told us was their most wanted thing. And they really want to collect them year round. So they're collecting them now. So we're super excited. Um, but how many do, you, do they think they would need for a year? Because these are very quick, almost like soap sacks that we could like, you have an idea what their total count would be? They would like a few hundred of these. I want to thank everybody for, for watching this. Melanie, that was super educational and fun. And I hope everybody learned a lot. So we're going to make lots and lots of these. Um, if anybody has any questions at all, as always, come join us in our um, Crafting Change community to learn more. All of our projects and patterns are up on our Pinterest board. And um, we, we welcome you to join with us in making these for our charity partners. So thanks a lot for watching.